Man, ham, and man, ham, and man, ham. You had to just. I only, I used the tool for the one note because I was watching while I was doing something else as I do. This this tool is for me. I think other people hopefully will find it useful, but. The point is, I'm watching videos a lot. I listen while I work and stuff. So I could take the time to go, ooh, there's something I want to note down. But if I write it on a piece of paper, which I can also do, I lose the piece of paper. I don't bring it home. I, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's especially good. See, I didn't have to rewatch a whole long video to find the clip I wanted to comment on. Um, so, yeah. So this one I have a lot more notes, so let's just go through this. Thanks for the reply in advance. He described it as almost it was a ride at the theme park or something. Um, so I mean, I thought that was a little bit funny. So anyway, I'm not gonna play it, but yeah, it's just a description of his old life trauma. And um, That's all. so apparently we're supposed to have some sort of contest. Um, but anyway. No, see, th there is no contest. I know you have suffered. Okay, I think a lot of the anti-natalists should get in a contest like that because I think a lot of them are pampered. But I think I consider you more genuine on this subject precisely because um, I believe you actually have suffered. The thing is you accuse us of not having suffered and when we say that we have, you go without the person. But you make it personal. I mean, you make a defense here that oh, I was just throwing it at Professor Anton. Well, guess what? Professor Anton has had some sort of brain surgery crisis or something, too. It might not be as well-known or as well-recognized. It's a terrible thing, but it was, and et cetera. He knows about it. Okay, not everybody wants to share that. I obviously don't share my things. It has been drawn into relevancy because usually these things are very personal it's simply not that relevant except in a subject like this where general misery and suffering are being discussed but beside that you have said the same exact thing to me uh, there was I almost replied with this reply earlier to another video that was to me about brain surgery because it happens to be one of these sort of examples of typical terrible misery and yeah it was too it was exactly like that it was pretty terrible okay jumping way ahead to 435 not because there's not a lot of lovely things probably but because I thought shit I better use my tool <laughs> at 433 <laughs> okay go go what are you waiting for oh yeah I can make you go I'm in trouble go it's stop simple. go stop go stop <laughs> Why do you keep interrupting yourself? Stop. Okay, I'm sorry. That's really childish. Okay. But somehow the people who have a whole different sensibility than yours are somehow wrong. And somehow they need to be modified to be more like you people who want to pay this price for life. Who find it acceptable to have seizures and brain tumors and, and go through this nonsense. You know, Gary, how you like to say, you just don't get it. You just don't, well, you don't get my point. I am pro-choice. I don't just think, I don't think I know what's best for Gary, but he's got to do it himself and make the mistake. I actually think that the only person on the earth that can figure out what's best for Gary is Gary. Now, Gary might get it wrong, and somebody else's guess, Gary could come along and go, you know what, you you were right, I, but that would be Gary's decision. So, no, I don't say you should change. You're the one telling me I should change my attitude that it's sadistic and blah, blah, and irrational and the rest. Okay, just get that straight, Gary. Just understand, you say that explicitly to me and anybody else that is pro-choice when it comes to natalism. All right? I am pro-choice. I don't say you should modify yourself. Here's what I believe. People that don't think life is worth living should not have kids. Absolutely. fucking lutely Let's invent a name for that. Okay. Depressinatalism or something. Or malinatalism. Or only bringing kids in to suffer because I think life is suffering. Yeah, those people should not have kids. And you know what? It's not because their kids wouldn't be happy because you're rolling the dice. Maybe they would. And it's actually, I probably think they would because they would have the kind of a, a cynicism you need in life. The, the Camus-like understanding of absurdity to enjoy life in the first place. Okay. 
But it's not that they would suffer or anything else or that they would be bad parents. I think antinatalists could be just as good a parents as anybody else and probably are, right? It's just because you think it's suffering. For you to impose it on somebody, that would be wrong. Period. End of the story. Not because what's going to happen because you can't tell the future. Okay, next one. 554. Tough shit because I think it's really neato. And that's all you've got is I think it's really neato. I think it's worth a brain surgery. Um, so anyway, but yeah, again, my argument was with Professor Anton and his lifestyle and his analogy that suffering amounts to 10 puppies with thorns in their paws. Well, I wanted to acknowledge that difference. Okay, I, I agree that it is extreme of Professor Anton to say that. You know, I'm not a huge friend... Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Professor Anton's uh, style or approach or anything like that, or maybe you don't know, but I'm not. And um, the only grain of fairness, let's say, in that is, you know, that Metamorph, not you, has talked about the, you know, single pin pinprick theory and, and whatnot. So, you know, there there is an element of... of of this that that is applied for example if I m change that into a more reasonable thought experiment not more reasonable but since it's a thought experiment more reasonable what if that was the misery what if that was the misery in the universe what if everything was fine neutral or maybe even everybody else you love these thought experiments was happy somehow by some miracle okay I know you still think it's meaningless, but they're not, there's no misery, there's no objective negative. So they're at the neutral, even though they think they're really happy, they're not, but they're, they are at the neutral. But there's 10 suffering puppies that have thorns in their paw. Would you think that that would be an okay universe? I would assume no. So therefore, there is some legitimacy in his otherwise unfair characterization. I mean, I think I am more fair because, yes, I admit, you want to talk about brain surgery and, and you know, rheumatoid arthritis and migraines and things like this. There's some misery. And, you know, I agree that there's things that could happen to me. I would commit suicide. I just think it's a personal decision. And I think painless suicide. I, I think people should have a right to painless and socially acceptable suicide. How could you tell people, Piero, what should be socially acceptable? Well, I can't make them, but I would argue to them that, yes, it should be socially acceptable, and it should be... Um, that doesn't mean the families have to accept it. There can be families that frown upon it or whatever, as far as I'm concerned. But it should be socially acceptable, and it should be painless and available. That would solve your problem. That plus two... If somebody that does procreate has a profound and lifelong obligation to their children, no matter what happens to them, what they become, how terrible, doesn't mean you have to protect them. Quite the opposite. Maybe they have to not be protected. Maybe they have to be turned in. But you still have to support them in some sense uh, to try to make their life as good as possible. You know, it's just that there is a point where if somebody's like a murderer and you can turn them in and stop them from murdering. I think it's a bad thing. I don't think people that are getting a kick off of murdering are like really getting a kick. Mostly, I think that they're sick. So if you can stop them so that later, if and when they get healed, they could have less you know, baggage that they have to deal with that they, oh, I really did that, I didn't just think it. You know, then you have to do that. Using some narcotic, some Kool-Aid to give the slaves some Kool-Aid so they enjoy their slavery. Um, that's all you're describing here. It's just bullshit. Yeah, in a way, you know, it is. Because, look, I think if you were born into slavery, I would not be an antinatalist. Um, actually, I'm writing a story on this exact subject because I think it's very provocative of the antinatalism argument to have it argued among slaves. So in my story, there's a kind of an ignorant father that's having a baby because it's going to make his slave wife, who has nothing else to live for, happy. Okay, that represents an immoral procreation. 
And then there's a guy who wants to slave revolt, man. And that presents a, a, a better reason. And then there's a curmudgeon -y kind of guy. It's not inspired by anybody. I just made it up. Uh, who's bitching at both of them that, the, that they're terrible, sadistic people and they shouldn't bring people into slavery. And that they are basically slave traders. So how, how strong of an argument is that? And I don't resolve any of the issues, but in the end, I will say that the the person that had the child just to please his wife, he has a daughter who becomes a successful revolutionary. The guy that had a child to be a revolutionary, his child just becomes a waste about narcissistic nutcase. And uh, so make of it what you will. But the point is, Okay, the point is that, yeah, slaves should take an elixir of wanting to live life. How could you do that? How could you do that? Well, by making your life meaningful. If I was born into slavery, slaving away in the fields would not be sufficient for me. But being a revolutionary, sneaking into the master's house and setting it afire, because this is an extreme situation, it calls for violence when you're enslaved calls for violence to make your life meaningful god i would hate to be in i'm a nonviolent person i'd hate to be in that situation but if i was in that situation with the mentality i have now the philosophy at least it, it, it to make your life meaningful you'd have to fight the man so yes i want an elixir anybody can make their life meaningful if you are in a terrible 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 situation that is man's oppressing man you can fight it if you're in a terrible terrible situation where you have a disease that means you're gonna be miserable till you die then you can have painless suicide um all right here pyro these people need to stop saying I'm imposing existing on them as I am NOT their parents again this is just such a lame excuse pyro you roll a set of dice you don't roll control okay there's no way you had control over what you were rolling Anything could have been the product of your childbirthing experiment. Yeah, and like you go on to point out, I mean, I don't know how it has turned out. The thing is, when I make a decision at 15 to apply to Berkeley and Stanford as colleges, uh, I made a decision. I could have not got into the, either one. I could have, I didn't get into Stanford. No money. I don't know if I would have gotten in academically because it's, it's kind of a mixed thing. My academics were not good enough that they said, we'll just give him scholarships, which they do do. So I don't know if I would have gotten in anyway. If I had enough money, I would have for sure gotten in. But anyway, when I made that decision, you know, lots of ramifications to move cross country, to do this, to do that. They, lots of ramifications to my future self, to the self I am now, I'm 43. So I'm constantly making a decision now that will affect the system in the future and to me I draw the connection through life and at one point it becomes a non-conscious life and comes into consciousness a separate consciousness the non-conscious part is of, of absolutely no direct import because I have non-conscious parts in my own individual life but the separateness the fact that I can have my individually on Tuesday and the very same Tuesday the other entity does yeah I agree that's significant but you just want to ignore the continuity of that all right that that the risk of continuing to live is similar between the whole progeny as it is between an individual just throughout their life it is similar you don't want to see you want to you don't call me a fuck fucktard till late i made a prediction you call me a fucktard through the whole thing before i watched it and you didn't until later down here about 1648 or so um, or more like 18 minutes that's a really long note but um, but anyway we'll get to that and I disagree the only remaining question is whose uh, opinion about my life carries more weight mine or yours again it's not about your life pyro again you just don't get it we've been talking about procreation you keep talking about your life um, we keep talking about your decision to reproduce, to do a biological experiment that put me at jeopardy again. And that's the fact of the matter. So you're telling me it's not about me, 
It's about whether I'll put you at jeopardy. The fact of the matter. The fact of the matter. Turned up whatever number is Gary. That's what they could have turned up. And you took that chance. And there's all these other people it could have been. Somebody with higher sensibilities, different sensibilities. They didn't like your food. They didn't like your house. They didn't like the color of your walls. They didn't like anything about this world you threw them into. And that could have been the realistic prospect of your fucking experiment. Well, I haven't, and I'm not going to talk about the mentality much of my, in much detail of my daughters. But you don't know, they don't have those kinds of attitudes now. But I have talked to them about antinatalism. And yeah, they didn't end up antinatalist so far, but they may end up antinatalist. Anyway, this note isn't over. It's really long. It goes all the way to 18 minutes. Um, they could have been born with their brain outside their head. They could have... Okay, now look. They could have been born with their brain outside their head. I don't think we have to worry about that, right? Because according to you, that's not really a conscious being. I mean, brain outside your head. I mean, I might have to worry about that. What with the whole sentience of all life awareness thing that I have to deal with but that's my burden you don't have to worry about the brain outside the head that's just a pile of meat according to your kind of philosophy as far as I could see they've been born autistic they could have been born in a horrible awful circumstance and you keep pretending that no one has a right to speak for those victims no you keep pretending that you're the only one that speaks for them I believe in fighting for things like autism funding brain in your skull prenatal care so don't you know you are the one that say you're the only one that cares about them. the only way to care about them is to say they shouldn't exist so i bring in my life because it applies to me you're telling me i'd be better off not existing and you know you want to say it's because you were lucky bro the lottery blah 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 well i didn't motherfucker you know this brain surgery that is far from the worst experience i've had okay far from it so yeah let's not play the who worst game Let's stick with that logic that you said, um, but I'll be talking about my shit anyway because it's just a matter of time. I'm just a very patient, slow person, but I will get to it. That nobody has a right to say those people would have been better off not to have existed and you had no right to impose on them with your reckless experimentation. You have the right to say that, and that's why we discuss it. If you were more often saying, hey, I'm going to go kill people, I wouldn't talk to you about it. On the other hand, you guys do go into that. I just argued with the comment you're not going to go through of an antinatalist asshole in those comments, and that's fine. I don't say that's your fault, but I know you skip those comments. You look at ones that insult you. Fine. But, you know, they do take that tack that you're denying and trying to talk around, okay? And you just keep running from that argument by saying, I got lucky, therefore... No, I am saying I didn't get lucky. I did not get lucky. I'm still not lucky. I was in... I mean... I'm still not lucky. I make it this. Because when I have brain surgery, I go, this sucks. All of the misery that's happening, it sucks. But I don't wallow in it. And you can. I believe it's fine to wallow. Some animals want a wall. I'm not judging that. But I don't. I say, I'll just remember that. I'll remember the parts that were hard. I'll remember lessons about hard parts that maybe I can avoid, which in that case, nothing. And, uh, you know, I will think about those as hardships that I went through. But I'm not going to have a hardship a year later thinking about it. That's what sense of humor is for. That's what learning is for. That's what hey, at least I learned what it was like to be on morphine. I obviously can't control that myself, but they gave it to me for a week, so I'm interested in the mind. I know what morphine is like. I mean, you can collect the silver linings. Does it mean that the silver lining was bigger than the cloud? No. And if you told me you have to have a life where you get a brain surgery, you go six months, you drive for a week, and then you have to do it again, no, I would not live that life, okay? But brain surgery once is pretty fucking bad, and I would live that life. Now, you should be asking questions like, okay, well, if right now I could relive it right up to this point, I'm going to get hit by a bus in a few minutes, would I do it? Fuck yeah. Would I live right up to the point where I went into surgery and then die in surgery? Yes, I would. 
would I go right to the point where I had um, the attack, the seizure, the grand mal, and live on? Okay, I don't know about that. That that see because at that point I learned nothing from it yet, and but I probably would. Oh no, wait. I'm sorry. If I was gonna keep living, but if I was gonna die during surgery, uh, I would have done it. If I was gonna die. Um, during the seizure, which doesn't even make sense because seizures just aren't like that, but I was having a brain hemorrhage, I could have died. So, um, I, I would have rather stopped a little bit earlier, probably, a couple days earlier in that case. I don't have to account for the losses, which is no better than... No, see, I do believe you have to account for the losses. Look, my position, you, I have helped you make your position clear. You're not thankful, fine. I am also making my position clear. My position is that one, the right to painless, socially acceptable suicide, plus an absolute responsibility on the part of the parent to stick with the kid through thick and thin their whole life, that solves the problem. Plus three, as a parent, to do number two, you have to figure out your control issues okay a winner in the lottery saying oh, I don't see what it's so bad I made a million dollars so it must be a good thing and just ignoring the losers just ignoring the real risk that existed and and the real harm that's done to me I do, obviously don't ignore that harm you, you know you're just making that up you, Gary you know I don't ignore that harm you can say, your plan to help them is lame. Water in Africa, well, no, nobody wants to drink water in Africa. They like the water from the surface. Whatever, but you cannot pretend that this comes from not, no. I, if anything, the problem you should accuse me of is being kind of a misery junkie or something. Because I think fucking nothing, if I think I gotta go there and do something, I go there. Oh look, there's miseries. The miseries are gonna come. I can handle them because I've got to do that. Okay, so you, you fucking have me as wrong as could fucking be. <sighs> I mean, again, I mean, it, it, there's no real point though in describing to me some some horror that you went through when you don't describe it as much of a horror. I mean, really. I mean, I know people who have like migraine headaches. You know, I only, I only had a few in my life, but I mean, people have them all the time. Yeah, and me it's too. horrible. It's yep, I work horrible. with somebody who, if she's under, I wouldn't want to live a day. Or some life. You're just, like, you're talking about your brain surgery. Like, yeah, you just skipped through, it and then you had a little bubbly noise in your head, and then everything was just fine. You went to your little programming seminar, and everything was la di da di da. So, I mean, if you're going to talk to me about how you survived horror, you're going to have to do a little better than this, because this didn't sound like horror. You, you just described brain surgery as a, as a romp in the park. And uh, that's not my knowledge of it. That's not what I've seen of people who've had it. Um, it hasn't been no fucking fun at all. But whatever. That's just how I am. I romped through that. I, I've, I've probably taken breakups worse than that. I romped through it. Well, that is the point. It's not your point. Obviously, I wasn't making your point. I was making my point. And, but you know it wasn't a romp through the park, right? I don't have to tell you. It was not a romp through the park. You know? And my, dis my description of it all during the time would have been different. But it wouldn't have been, woe unto me, I shouldn't even have been born. It would have been more like, figure out what this means. Figure out why I have to go through this. Figure out what I can learn from this. This is a hard experience. I happen to know hard experiences can help you grow. How can I make sure this hard experience helps me grow instead of becoming bitter? Okay, so that's just the way I've always been. I would be willing to say it was the DNA that made me that way, but I don't know that. This is the last one talking about your heroic battles in the in the arena you know and the lions you slew and you're showing us your battle scars is not impressive 
All right, show Liar. me the scars. Show me the scars on your. Um, um, you know what? First of all, I totally admit that. Yes, there is an element, and that's why I don't do that on my channel all the time. And I am proud of the things I've survived. Absolutely. And it is a battle scar, and that's exactly when I talk about the manly aspect of it. You know, like that's the manly you survive. I, I admit that. You know. Yeah. But you want to see my empathy scars? Oh my God! As I said earlier in this video, you know, this is not my worst experience in my life, by far, by far, by far, because. A medical thing like this is scary and the mortality to me the way I am that's not as hard as other things I had to figure out emotionally what people meant and thought and stuff like that that misery thing that you're talking about and my deepest scars and endurance and the rest of it is definitely the empathy scars because I have dove in I am the kind of person that dives in I you know I'd literally friend we were lost in the woods at night fell in. I didn't even know there was water there. They're like, here we are. We're coming back. We were looking. We couldn't find the thing. Crack. They were on a branch. Fell into the water. Pitch black. No lights. We were... That's a whole story that involves us being stupid. But anyway, you know, I didn't even think about it. I dove into the water where I heard the sound. I think nothing of taking on misery to help someone else. You do not want to get into my empathy scars, okay? I really don't think you do if you don't, you say you don't want to have a scar contest, okay? And I certainly don't. I'd, I'd like to figure out ways to talk about some of that if it's going to be illuminating. But your speculation on of empathy scars is very mistaken, right? Very. On your appetite, that are showing some respect. Some, some real respect for the real grief and pain and misery that has been endured by sentient creatures on this planet. Show me one fucking tear. Yeah, I don't think you can pull it off. Selfish fucking look. I've shown you more than one tear, Gary. Uh... That's just desperation on your part. What? Cheers. Oh.